Welcome to the Pro-Life Team Podcast. I'm Jacob Barr, and I'm here with Sean Zerke, and we're going to be talking about Guiding Star and pregnancy clinics redefining or considering the idea of redefining uh, medical services in order to adopt a more whole women's healthcare model. So, so Sean, I'm so excited to have you on the podcast again. And I'm excited to, yeah, to hear about, well, Guiding Star and medical clinics and clinics becoming more medical. Would you introduce yourself for those who may not know you as if you were talking to a small group of uh, pregnancy clinic leadership teams? Sure. So um, you may have heard me on this podcast in my capacity as the consultant owner with Zerke Consulting Group, um, which I still do. But I was also hired as the vice president of affiliates for Guiding Star Project. And um, Guiding Star Project is redefining women's health care. And, um, and how we do that um, is by uh, through new affiliate organizations across the U.S. Um, we believe that women deserve to understand how their bodies work and pro women's healthcare clinics um, affirm women's bodies in their natural state. And so at Guiding Star, we believe that everyone deserves excellent health care. So that is what our aim is. I can talk a little bit more uh, about why we're trying to redefine women's health care, um, that narrative surrounding it, especially in a post-row world, and how we believe the Guiding Star model does that. Um, very specifically why we believe the guiding star model does that um as I think that'd yeah. be really good yeah if you could just if you could define or explain your thoughts on redefining women's health care I, I, I would love to hear that so um you know i i the first thing i would do is uh challenge anyone to do a few simple searches online looking at um topics like uh, birth control, side effects, birth trauma, postpartum depression, uh, and topics like that. It, it wouldn't take you long to see what I'm about to um, expound on. But if you look at those Google results in those areas of birth control, side effects, birth trauma, postpartum depression, um, even um, maternal fetal mortality rates, uh, then you would see, especially if you look at those with compassion, you would see that those stories um, and those issues are real and the, the trauma that they're causing to women is real and that as Guiding Star is a life-affirming organization, we have to really consider what that means. Um, the standard in modern women's healthcare is really missing the mark, and that's at the root of it all. It's outdated, it, it's underserving the true needs of women. And honestly, our current healthcare systems created an absolute mistrust of our body's natural capacities as women. And to me, it's, it's so clear that what's being proclaimed as, to women as healthcare is actually what's harming them. I mean, women um, are dying in states where abortion has been banned or limited, not because of the overturning of Roe v. Wade, but because of high maternal fetal mortality rates. I mean, those are very simply caused by increased cesarean rates and low breastfeeding weights, uh, rates, excuse me. I mean, I can, I can keep going. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I guess what I'm curious about is what kind of information is someone finding when they search on birth control or postpartum, and what should they be finding when they search on these topics? Sure. Um, well, here's one that not many people really put together, 
um, because they thought it was the norm. But most women healthcare providers won't see a woman until she's at least eight weeks press pregnant. And some won't actually be able to get in and get an appointment until they're about 12 weeks along. Um, why? Well, 80% of miscarriages happen in the first 12 weeks. And for many women, the early months of pregnancy are actually when they need assistance and support. They're filled with tons of questions, their body's changing, you know, warning sickness. <laughs> and, um, you know, we should be checking hormonal levels to be certain we're doing everything we can to help prevent those early miscarriages. Do they need progesterone intervention? Um, and when you look at the physical and emotional toll that it takes on a woman and her family to even go through a miscarriage, if those things can be avoided by having early intervention, shouldn't women have that? Yeah. And so, and what's the reasoning for, so are you, oh, well, let me back up. Are you suggesting that maybe pregnancy clinic should offer, um, you know, or, or a pregnancy clinic should offer help in those earliest weeks so that they can have those answers and have that uh, medical consultation, even if it's in the earliest weeks, even before eight weeks? Absolutely. And if you're looking at a nurse midwife that is trained in, um, fertility awareness methods such as Creighton, Fem, Marquette, or Billings, uh, and that also offers uh, progesterone intervention, then yes, even without the progesterone intervention, if they can refer someone to a physician who will offer that um, when there may be an impending miscarriage that can be reversed, then that's just good quality health care. I mean, it's having someone walk alongside you, but the reason that it's not done is because um, for the two reasons, one is that most miscarriages happen during that time. And so our healthcare system is set up to not prevent that and walk alongside a woman and, and um, help her avoid miscarriage, but it actually promotes that promotes miscarriage. Well, let's just let them miscarry and then we'll actually give them health care if it's a good uh, pregnancy that's made it this far because then insurance will pay for it after you've missed two periods. Many, many years ago, insurance would only pay for one ultrasound for the entire pregnancy. So most women didn't even get that ultrasound until the anatomy scan. They were going to they weren't going to waste it on an early one. They were going to do that one that was paid for by insurance when they could tell whether you had um, fetal abnormalities physically. That has so thankfully changed. What, what, is, what is the so what does the the medical community call it um, before you know that point where it's you know too young and it might be likely to miscarry? And then after that point, it's uh, more likely to carry. Is like, do they call that word viable, or what do they call it between those two um, stages uh, or times? One is just um, early gestation, and uh, okay. in the first trimester. I mean, excuse, yeah, the first trimester, and the first prior to the first twelve weeks being completed. Right. Yeah. My um, brain is counting. I was like, wait, so what do yeah. you so? <laughs> so how does guiding star or, or having a medical clinic become you know going under this new definition of redefining women's health care how does that you know impact um, what kind of care is being provided well let's talk about that um so i gave you a great fact about not seeing women until after they've missed two periods because of the miscarriage rate and not trying to really prevent that but if you're looking at women's health care from adolescence through postmenopause, um, another great fact is the average age of a young woman uh, being put on birth control is 16. But it's not uncommon for young women to be uh, put on the pill even earlier than that. And the moment our cycles start and show any sign of irregularity, which is, by the way, normal and to be expected in the first two years, um, seeds of doubt are planted in impressionable minds. Uh, you know, I find it interesting that 77% of female teenage students in the U.S. report wanting more in-depth education about their menstrual health. And 
you know, we learn so early on that their bodies are messed up and you just can't trust your body. And that's a sentiment that's carried a long time with each of us before we're ever dealing with the first pregnancy. And so when you then take that feeling about your body being messed up or it's not normal, not knowing what actually normal is, then you carry that into um, whether you're feeling adequately to um, have a, uh, you know, capable of birthing a baby or breastfeeding a baby or dealing with um, the postpartum period or just motherhood in general. And, and if we're talking about birth control, 30% of women change their birth control five times over the course of their fertile years. And most of those methods offered to women make us gain weight, lose bone density, increase our risk for breast cancer, affect our mental and emotional state, and honestly, ultimately do nothing to treat the issues we were experiencing when we even started the pill for health reasons. Women should have access to the most recent data and the most effective natural me measures available to help us avoid feeling just disconnected and from our own bodies. And so guiding star clinics, um, so we have three strategies right now. If you are a pregnancy center and you are um, at least a pregnancy health medical clinic, so you have a medical director, you are offering um, nurse administered pregnancy tests and uh, limited obstetrical ultrasounds, STD testing, um, at least those types of things. Maybe once in a while you do a well woman exam if you have a nurse practitioner or a volunteer physician come in. Then if you um, are really wanting to take the next leap into women's health, um, the natural next step in our mind is to become a guiding star center with this model um, where you offer fertility care, like I referenced before, Creighton, um, Femme, Marquette, or Billings, um, even Creighton, Napro, if it's available with the surgical options, progesterone supplementation, which means that you can also offer abortion pill reversal because progesterone supplementation is the main treatment in abortion pill reversal. Um, and so then having uh, life-affirming OBGYNs or family medicine providers in your clinic. Um, maybe you're offering childbirth classes. Uh, let's see, miscarriage and infant loss support would be another um, offering, providing at least early prenatal care through the first 20 weeks of pregnancy um, and partnering with the pro-life OB in your community, um, doing well woman exams, pap smears and other STD testing, of course. Um, Maybe you offer miscarriage kits, uh, perinatal hospice and infant loss support, um, options counseling, of course, you're already offering in your pregnancy center, so it's a nice fit. Um, and then you go into the lactation support, breastfeeding support activities, a baby weigh station so they can weigh their baby before and after they get coaching and in, in lactation support, a space to provide that. Um, having maybe a, a certified lactation consultant on site. Um, of course, breastfeeding classes. We have one of our guiding star centers that has a breast milk bank um, where they have, they freeze the breast milk and it's a breast milk sharing program, uh, offering breastfeeding supplies, doing those postpartum checkups. Um, and of course, the very important postpartum depression screening, um, doula support for birth and postpartum, and then the one signature thing for a guiding star center that is a deal breaker, you can have any or all of the services I mentioned before, but a deal breaker for our uh, brand is that you must have a drop-in child watch area during the day or during the hours that you're open at a minimum. And the, the um, accompanying or adjacent uh, mom's nap or lounge room in the same building so moms can safely bring their babies for two to three hours or children up to age two. I think it is, maybe it's, maybe it goes higher actually in some of our centers, but then if they are a single parent and need 
a break. They can come in, take a break, have someone trusted watch their child. Maybe they have a class they need to attend or um, a doctor's appointment there in the building. Then they, so long as they stay in the building, then, then the child watch area is for them. And then of course, all the material wow. assistance you see at pregnancy centers we have. Um, and then we have a couple of clinics that have neat ancillary services like um, on-site emotional counseling, um, mental health counseling services, adoption counseling, uh, parenting classes, relationship classes, a variety of classes from car seat safety training to hormone wellness and fertility money management and so on. So a lot of the same things that you would see in a pregnancy center, but we're adding on that total women's health care piece. Wow. And I really like the uh, the drop-in child deal breaker piece because that's what a, what a relief to sort of just give someone like that, yeah, just that space to rest or to be able to go to a class without having to line up child care. Like that just feels like such an amazing offering and service. Well, what about all what, the what does that women that are, are called drop in? Or, yeah. I was just going to say, what about all the women that risk for postpartum depression and postpartum psychosis that actually their child gets saved and so does the mom in that moment just to have a break? Mm. So... So these are a lot of services. Does does Guiding Star promote grant writing or charging for services to that so that Medicare or some kind of there's some kind of like funding source for sub, sub providing these additional services? So each of our current um, eight affiliates have different um, revenue structures. Um, some of them chart everything in Athena and they bill Medicaid and private insurance. And some of them are all charity care. We have another that is, uh, they offer free or charity care sliding scale for self pay based on income. Um, and they accept insurances. Um, so basically no one is turned away. I mean, these are all nonprofit health centers. And so they would all offer free services at a foundation. Um, but many of many states with expanded Medicaid in particular, um, especially when you're dealing with moms with babies. So even if they may not have qualified for Medicaid before, now if they're pregnant, then they do. And so um, they're insured. And so you're if you're a medical clinic offering medical services to someone who is insured, then you're leaving money on the table by not um, accepting insurances. Just like you're referring. So a lot of people push back and say, oh, I don't want the government and I don't want to accept government money. But I always ask pregnancy centers, are you referring your women to pro-life OBGYN? Well, yes, of course then they accept Medicaid and private insurance. Are they telling them not to practice as pro-life OBGYNs? Well, no. Okay. So then why would that be different for you? Mm, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, so what, what are, are there any drawbacks? from charging for services? Like what, you know, are there any negatives to that scenario? I haven't seen any in any of the clinics, um, except that they have fee for service revenue. Um, I have helped, um, for example, here in Florida for clinics that offer charity care, so free services, and they also bill insurance. Um, they've added a clause in the Florida Pregnancy Center Network contract um, to reference double dipping. So you can't do contracted free services that the Florida Pregnancy Center Network and the, the grant that comes from the state um, covers. It has to be patients that are uninsured. If you accept insurance. Okay. Um, and, I, and I have heard that, you know, there's some some government grants that do come with like requirements well and well you know charging for services rendered seems to be does not come with that same kind of you know requirements is that true or what are your thoughts on like so there are many money, many you know, grants there are many grants out there that have very specific parameters and as i advise all of the people that i do grant writing consulting for um 
if you cannot meet those parameters, do not apply for that grant. Yeah. And then it seems like the, you know, getting, uh, having compensation for services seems to be based on the fact that you're providing services more so than on outside requirements. It seems like that's the gist. And so there, it's, yeah, it seems like it's very different to get um, compensated for services rendered to the community compared to, yeah, the, the grant that would have those requirements that may not be compatible with an, with an organization. Well, um, so we have one of our Guiding Star Centers in Iowa who's applying for a federal grant right now and um, that specifically addresses um, the Hispanic community and maternal fetal mortality. Um, and she's using lactation and doula services to intervene specifically in that community um, to their service area. And all, there are no restrictions that would um, compromise their um, practice philosophy. So they're able to be who they are and life affirming and are not required to offer any services that would violate that um, belief and practice. So going back to the, the I, I guess the reason, the reasons for becoming more, more medical or, you know, trying to redefine um, women's health care. Um, what are the driving um, reasons that would make it so that you're able to better reach, you know, a, a pregnancy clinic could re better reach their mission by having these extended services or new services? So, um, okay, I'll give you a great example. Planned Parenthood does sex ed in the high school, right? So, well, we, we mm -hmm. already know that it is skewed and uh, the values on which that sex ed is based is um, not in alignment with um, what we each believe morally or ethically, right? Um, and so, but what they're doing by being in the schools is that when those kids that are involved in sexual activity and they think they might have an STD or that they might be pregnant, where are they going to go? They're going to go to Planned Parenthood clinic. Um, so if you're offering services that span from um, adolescence through postmenopause, then you now are creating a relationship with these women in their community before they're ever in crisis. So that when they're in crisis, you are who they come to because they already have a relationship with you. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Essentially, um, awareness, like it's awareness building so that you're not just, you know, unknown. You're, you're, you're becoming, you're building relationship by providing services. It also seems to have like a funding, um, well, you know, essentially by, you know, getting funding for services rendered and, and, ex and extending those services, it seems like your, yeah, the viability of the organization seems to be strengthened, especially if it's supporting, serving the right client base with better awareness yeah. so that people are coming to a familiar group more so than a new group. Right. So think about, um, I have a client right now who they are a pregnancy out medical clinic. They have a mobile unit as well. And they are adding in a 28 week men's program and hiring um, a man to run it. And they are seeking grant funding to um, at least help support it, a uh, half of it for the first year. And in doing so, they're addressing one of the um, root issues. So you think, okay, why is a pregnancy center doing a men's program? But many people don't realize that um, dads are the key to preventing abortion. They, I mean, if you look at the four main reasons a woman cites for um, saying that they need an abortion, they're related in some way to the man in their life 
or the lack thereof, or the lack of income from a two-parent household if it's related to income issues. So by having a men's program, for example, a fatherhood program, then you are directly addressing the abortion issue from the father side in your community. So Guiding Star, there are two, three Guiding Star centers that have uh, the Intro to Manhood program. So they're um, just like they have an Intro to Womanhood program. And so they're reaching teen boys um, early on in high school and talking to about Intro to Manhood. And then these other programs, they do them obviously after they're already in crisis, but they're teaching them about money management and how to get a job and how to be a father and all gospel aligned uh, structure uh, instruction. Um, I know the one group is using Bright Course and 28 of their modules combined for their men's program. Okay. And, and it, it seems like, yeah, reaching reaching our audience, whether it be months or years before they would need us, hopefully with the intent that they won't have an unplanned pregnancy um, is, yeah, like that, if, I feel like that's sort of the result is that we're, well, the benefit might be that we're increasing the culture of life or promoting the culture, you know, promoting the culture of life um, mindset. And then also, yeah, of helping people avoid unplanned pregnancies by well or more really avoiding abortion even more so than that perhaps even yeah. um and then providing that yeah care essentially whole care more, you know going further back and further forward to essentially cover the client with with the care needed yeah i mean um, women from adolescence through postmenopause need to know that they're not broken they need to know that they deserve great health care and they need to be affirmed in how their bodies are functioning and a guiding star center that is the culture around which it's been created so whatever support you need at whatever stage in your life um, that's where the guiding star center comes in and we're hoping that pregnancy okay. centers so want to evolve to that um, because think about it, if there's 3,700 pregnancy centers and 25% of them are medical and they're ready to take the next level to a full women's health care clinic, uh, now we have outnumbered all the Planned Parenthood clinics across the U.S. with actual women's health care. So speaking, so this one might be a harder question to answer and we can skip it if it is, but so Planned Parenthood has focused on like the, the sex type of words when it comes to their content on their website and Google, like they have, like that's actually one of their main phrases is sex and related words. Do you think that, I mean, what are your thoughts on a pregnancy clinic having targeting those type of words in some way with content? What are your, what's your initial thought on that? So if you're, if you want to capture what people are searching and redirect them to your site so that they can get real answers, uh, that's just using a good SEO. But when they come to you, you do not want to mislead or deceive them. There's organizations out there um, that I could name, but I won't, but they um, are getting millions of dollars from state governments in order to run call centers with SEOs that um, direct people to their call center and then they think they're getting an abortion and instead of full disclosure, at some point in the conversation, they don't disclose at all that they're not referring um, or providing abortion. They let them believe that they are. And that is only fueling the fake clinic argument of, of you know, the Elizabeth Warren types out there um, and the, you know, the Mother Jones article that just came out where Leah Jacobson, the CEO of Guiding Star, was interviewed and accused that uh, of us of not having uh, real medical clinics, which is not true. We have real medical clinics. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it just seems like the, you know, the, the pregnancy clinics and, you know, um, 
pregnancy clinics and clinics that have moral um, fortitude would we essentially could promote sexual, you know, healthy sexual decisions, such as having, you know, healthy a healthy sex life within marriage, right. having, you know, the you know, instead of having it, you know, plagued with uh, STIs and risk and 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 worry and outcomes that are undesirable. Um, I just feel like, and, and, but we haven't competed on those words as of yet. I, f- I feel like those words are, yeah, we're not competing in that space, but that could happen someday. i um, not sure when. That's just being the answer um, where pe- that people need that they didn't know they needed. So if you know that those search words are coming up, but you have answers that they're not gonna find from Planned Parenthood, then you can capture those search words, right? You do that. That's what you do with iRaptor. Yeah. That's, that's what the <laughs> SEO work is. Yeah, we, it's a matter of having content and having it align with, yeah, who clinics are. And who clinics are is obviously, as you're pointing out, is shifting. It's, it's you know, it's it's growing. It's changing. Um, and, and, yeah, and the, the idea of redefining whole women's health is a perfect example of how, on how, um, yeah, how our services are are changing right. and you know becoming more inclusive to include include our audience at an earlier stage um and i think it's similar to doing like sti testing where we're trying to reach someone before they have the unplanned pregnancy by engaging with them and building up that relationship i think these other services um make a lot of sense for us to be engaging um our yeah you know, the women clients in a more holistic approach and reaching them during these important years, uh, years before they might be at risk of having an unplanned pregnancy and hopefully helping them might divert or, you know, escape that pathway. Exactly. And make it planned. Put them in control of their bodies. Yeah. And not to say that an unplanned pregnancy, I mean, uh, you know, I, I personally think unplanned pregnancies is sometimes God's way of saying it's time. Right. And so I, I, <laughs> he decides. You know, but, <laughs> having like a positive reaction to an unplanned exactly. pregnancy exactly. is um, is part of that culture of life, um, yeah, posture that could that could be had. Well, I mean, and back uh, to your point about STDs. I mean, the person with an unplanned pregnancy is a potential to have two to three STDs as well, just because of their sexual risk factors involved in even becoming pregnant yeah. um, before they had planned to. Yeah, and so having yeah that, that so that combination of services makes a lot of sense, um, and um, so with with this um, so so if a if a pregnancy clinic has STI testing, they have the ultrasound services, and they have they you know they have some parenting classes. What would it look like for them to contact contact Guiding Star in order to try and consider adding additional layers of medical services? Um, would they be, you know, what's, what's that normally look like for that scenario? So we have, um, so our affiliates, um, either become guiding star in their local area or they are their current name. And then under that, it's a guiding star affiliate. Um, and in doing that, it's a complete package of, um, onboarding as far as, um, converting to um, our brand. So I hate to use this, but most people know what McDonald's is and that they have a brand and you have franchises. And so it's very similar that way. It's just a lot easier when you're already a pregnancy health medical clinic because a lot of the infrastructure is already in place. We have people that want a guiding star center and they start it from nothing. They come under our 501c3 um, become their own entity with their own board of directors. We help them with um, initial uh, fundraising and um, everything to start a nonprofit from filing their incorporation papers in their state and getting their EIN to um, their policies and procedures and bylaws and board training and um, the floor plan and layout and color scheme and uh, everything for their um, clinic building and job descriptions, how to interview. Even we use the EOS system um, for the entrepreneurial operating system. Have you heard of it? 
I have I have not heard of that before. What what it, what is the EOS? So this is Get a Grip, um, and then Traction is the other book, right here, for the EOS system, and um, Dino okay. Wickham Wickman Wickman is the author, and it's very it's kind of um, a mashup of all the best um, management systems for your business. Uh, it's very similar. It, they, they pull a lot from Patrick Lencioni. He's blessed it, um, who does the advantage. And, um, and because I am used to the advantage, it was very easy to transition to EOS. But when you are an entrepreneur or a serial entrepreneur like I am and in the role I'm at, in with Guiding Star, it's very helpful for moving a business forward quickly and effectively. And so we teach them all the EOS management, um, how to have effective meetings and set goals and um, and move your organization forward in a, in a very quick pace. Um, we are currently working on um, a learning management system platform that all of our affiliates and twinkles or new affiliates, as we call them, will walk through the entire affiliation process process um, on it. Um, the organization we want to work with currently hosts My Catholic Doctor and BOMA USA as well. And so we want to be able to have a, a reproducible, scalable model available in one place. I believe we have a reproducible, scalable model currently, but it's uh, not laid out on an LMS system, which would certainly make it so much easier for everyone. So that's what we're working towards. Okay, so essentially, um, if whether or not they keep their own brand and add the tagline, or they adopt the Guiding Star brand, they they would end up with their own. They're, they're going to continue to have an it, their unique EIN or five hundred one c three, and then they would be responsible for their own funding or accounting. Mm -hmm. But they would have the the shared marketing, the shared front end through the uh, franchise model. Yeah, by with their affiliate those fees, assets. the affiliate fees they pay, they pay, um, then they end up with the entire system and process and programs and resources. Okay, and then when it comes to bringing in all, you know, onboarding all these new services, uh, I'm assuming that's done in an intelligent, reasonable way. That's you know, not overwhelming. Yes. Well, <laughs> so the individuals that are usually the twinkles that want to start their guiding star clinic um, from scratch are we're finding our doulas or their fertility specialists or lactation consultants. Um, so they're already working in many of these areas. Nurse midwives. Sorry, we have um, two nurse midwives. Um, and so they want to open a birth center, but they want the full guiding star women's health clinic with their birth center. Um, and so that's the one that we are working towards in Tampa right now uh, with Tammy Masut uh, as their director. And she's a nurse midwife. Interesting. Yeah. And, and I can imagine um, like a non-medical pregnancy center who often refers someone to get the ultrasound at a pro-life medical clinic. Um, I can imagine a group like that enjoying finding a, a guiding star type of medical clinic that's more full service or whole women's health um, and something of, you know, of that caliber or nature so that it's, um, yeah, but, it, you know, because in the end, pro, the pro-life key is the, pr the primary factor, but then a secondary factor might be which services are being provided. And, yeah. and that would. So our clinic in Wakoda has um, an in-house um naturopath for kind of their in-house pharmacy. They also have uh, mental health counseling in-house and, and um, a chiropractor. And so they their, their add-on services for women really do um, support the whole person. Okay. Um, so who's an ideal candidate for someone who, you know, might be poised to redefine how they're doing medical and growing to be more of a, a full medical um, 
whole women's health clinic. so we currently have three strategies um, in our expansion plan the first is to recruit current pregnancy health medical clinics that are offering um, at least limited obstetrical ultrasound pregnancy tests and std testing um, and that have medical director um, and we really would love to see a lot of those. We'll, we'll take them wherever they're ready, but we would like to see them in the states where um, maternal fetal um, mortality rates are high because we believe this model will bring those rates down. And um, those are in the southeast area. Um, and the majority of those states are also ones that have um, banned abortion or limited access to abortion um, post row. And then, of course, our next strategy is to look for physicians and allied uh, medical professionals who share our vision for redefining women's health care um, by practicing medicine in a guiding star center in their state. So we are so we are recruiting physicians and mid-level providers. And then, of course, anyone who's interested, we, they're, they're called Twinkles, and we accept applications from individuals interested throughout the country who can see the benefit of a Guiding Star Center in their community, and we will um, add them as they come. Currently, we have um, multiple people interested, but three that are being actively um, moved towards opening um, that fall into that third strategy. Hmm. What is what is one of the bigger steps that sometimes people have to? That might they, you know. What's are there any like hurdles for like you know going more medical, or what's one of the bigger steps they have to try and um, fully accept in order to get past you know in order to work past it? Like you know, for example, going from a non-medical center or a limited medical that's not under HIPAA to going whole women's health, and this sounds like this would be more especially with the billing component, this would be more under HIPAA and, or things like that. What's one of the bigger pieces that someone might have to like get past? So while to, clinics, as part of this process? yeah, while clinics um, in certain categories don't necessarily fall under HIPAA, my advice is that they should all operate as if they do. Um, yeah. But that said, I think that the biggest issue, at least for pregnancy centers um, that are not medical. There's a reason that they're not medical yet because pregnancy health counseling centers or pregnancy resource centers have been around a very long time. And the opportunity to convert to medical has been around at a minimum 17, 18 years. And, um, yeah. and pregnancy centers ability to change with that over time has been very slow. And why? Um, I think that there are organizations out there advising pregnancy centers and scaring them. Um, honestly, and, and, and unfortunately, if we succumb to fear um, and stop trusting God with the mission that he's given us, then the enemy has won. And there's a way to be risk averse and um, follow best practices for medical clinics and still be pro-life and life affirming and on mission and sharing the gospel um, and still be a medical clinic. And so the, okay. the greatest challenge is change management. That's the bottom line to answer your question. It's bringing people along, yeah. encouraging them to overcome the fear that's been instilled in them, uh, the fear of being sued, the fear of being shut down. Um, and when you succumb to fear, then you're no longer trusting God as the, the leader of your organization and your ministry. Yeah, I am. Um... Yeah, and there's a lot of false beliefs that, that, yeah, the the false belief, the goal of the false belief is to, yeah, essentially derail or cause fear, um, stopping, yeah, stopping, slowing uh, down some forward progress. Yes. Yeah. So, 
being that you have a lot of experience in, with grants and you're on the Guiding Star team, are there any grant services that are like packaged in this franchise model? So or all of my consulting what, services, like like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all of my consulting services, along with an entire menu of consultants, whether they be in professional coaching or DISC or um, um, we have an entire consulting menu, but I have been added to it with all of my services um, for our affiliates coming in to our organization. Yes, they receive my services. Mm -hmm. So okay. I, I've been coaching and then I, I've coached speeches for a gala in the last week. I've helped with unemployment. I've helped with um, a federal grant and I've helped with a local foundation grant. Uh, with our affiliates in just the last week. Triple AHC accreditation. I'm also helping with one of our clinics moving towards Triple AHC accreditation. <laughs> and what is, is that, um, can you define what that is? Yes, I'll give you the exact words. Or, or, or yeah, what, what's the it The Accreditation mean, Association well. for Ambulatory Healthcare. Um, why would somebody want a Triple AHC accreditation? Because if you are in an area where um, you are being attacked as a quote fake clinic and you have a medical director and you're offering um, limited medical services, you are a clinic. You just limit the services you're offering. But a triple HC accreditation does multiple things. One of the, them is to give you a shield of protection of legitimacy um, for one and two, Honestly, the best practices in um, required to even become accredited help allay those fears that some of these organizations are trying to tell pregnancy centers that they should be scared of being sued and all, you know, they're not doing things right. If you achieve accreditation, you're doing something right. You have policies and procedures in place that you're following and documenting that protect you and your employees and your board, um, protect you from piercing the corporate veil, protect you from um, medical negligence and other mistakes because you're following your um, procedures. And then the third thing that accreditation offers is and requires in order to have it is a quality improvement plan. And that's new to a lot of pregnancy centers to add in a quality improvement plan, but it's normal in high functioning ambulatory health clinics. And so it just makes you better, stronger. And if you have a quality improvement plan, then you're measuring outcomes in patient data and service in um, a variety of domains. And so when you go to apply for those grants, you've already got the data of how effective you are. Hmm. So is that accreditation? Is that part of like the fran one of the requirements of not at all achieving? Not at all. Okay. It's just a next level. And we have, um, uh, one of our clinics wants to go to that next level. Their medical director is, um, on the board of a plug and, um, this is important to her. Okay. Um, awesome. So, I guess um, I'm trying to think of what other questions to ask. Um, how do you see God working through this, you know, greater scope of medical services being provided to to women and men? Teaching women that they're not broken and that they have support, um, that they deserve high quality health care. Um, I believe is blessed by God. Um, honestly, it, it's, it is. And, and all of these are based on life affirming biblical principles. Every one of our services, um, is founded in that. And so people like to separate, oh, well, you're a medical clinic, so you can't be, um, religiously incorporated or have this um, thread of religion running through things. And you really, in my opinion, you can't separate them if you're in a ministry. Um, it should come out of every 
it should just spill out of your desire to help people. Every nurse, every receptionist, every counselor, every per, uh, medical provider, um, it should just be the essence of who they are. So it's very much in alignment with what I believe God desires for healthcare to look like. So if someone's listening and they're thinking this sounds like a lot of work or it's going to cost a lot of money, what might you say to them to, you know, help them consider this idea and how, and how this work is worthwhile and how this, this idea will also help pay for itself based on services being rendered or then being billed to, um, you know, like to an insurance. So everybody uh, um, that might be interested may be positioned differently. So I would need to talk to them individually. Um, but if they're already mm -hmm. a pregnancy center and they are already offering medical services, then they already know the work involved. I can tell you that the affiliation fees are a drop in the bucket compared to um, the return on that investment. It, they're very small affiliation fees. In fact, I don't think they're, they're, they charge enough, but the prices were set before I got here. So, <laughs> but, <laughs> numbers, numbers. but the truth is um, each, each organization is in a different place and there are a lot of moving parts. And so the best way to figure out where they're at and if they're even positioned now or if they need to work towards things over the next year then i would encourage them to definitely um, reach out to me uh, at sean at the guiding star project.com dot org excuse me sean at the guiding star project dot org so yeah so if someone's thinking this sounds like a lot of work and it's expensive but i think i should consider it and i i just you know uh, it sounds like maybe the right response might be to reach out to you and have that conversation so they can sort of way, you know, just sort of way the benefits and the opportunity in a way that will, um, yeah. So something that, like me, it sounds like a very common, like, a, you know, a, a conversation that would be uh, shared with the board for them to consider, you know, if, if this is a direction that we should be going as a, a pregnancy clinic. Yeah. So we um, usually, I mean, I can tell you the first steps. People say they're interested. They tell me about their geographic area and that they'd like to learn more, I send them an NDA and a philosophy statement um, that we ask them to sign. Um, once we get past that portion, then um, there's a, a Zoom meeting and we talk about their specific, um, where they're at, um, who, what their board is like, where, what, why do they want to go to the next level, what plate, pieces do they have in place already and what do they need from us? Um, and then I send them an application um, and I do a site visit and I physically come out and um, see them. And then um, we review our applications and um, we, you know, they know everything up front, what the cost would be. Um, we help them with a pro forma business plan. We set up their electronic health records and um, everything soup to nuts they have, um, to run their new clinic. Are there, are there any other pro-life, um, groups like a guiding star who are helping clinics sort of grow their, um, ser medical services to this extent? Like, uh, is this, is this a novel or unique idea or are there other groups that are doing something along the same lines perhaps i would say that we're unique and novel because we offer um there are other groups that are trying to rebrand pregnancy centers but they don't offer the full extent of of comprehensive women's health that guiding star does nor mm -hmm. and like i said our signature offering at every one of our clinics it's a deal breaker you must have is the child watch drop-in area and the mom's um, nap or lounge room. And so in addition to that, it's kind of like a pregnancy center on steroids meets a OBGYN with a doula lactation um, and fertility clinic. And then you add in all the ancillary services like breast milk sharing and chiropractic care and mental health counseling and so on 
Um, so we're very different than other organizations that are out there. So here's a personal question. It sounds like you're taking on like a lot of work and then, or a lot of areas of work too. How do you, how do you take care of your own personal time management and how do you sleep at night without like worrying and thinking about all these things? Oh, I don't worry at night. I sleep great because I, um, I have a really good self, strong, healthy self-talk. I have a strong relationship with God. And um, I think it's because I'm wired as an ENTJ or a, um, a, in the disc, I'm a DI or I don't know, how, whatever people look at the personality things. Um, my husband and I have a date night every week. We've been married 30 years. It does help that I have a nurse here to help with our son, Samuel, that we recently adopted. Um, but otherwise, I have five adult children. And we take Samuel with us when we travel. So we just make it work. Wow. I, you know how I manage it all, Jacob? I love what I'm doing and I figured out what I love and I say no to the rest. That's good. Yeah. It's, it's interesting when you're doing what you love, um, the time goes by really quick because you almost like forget that you're actually doing it and you're just sort of fully connected to like what you're actually doing. Exactly. And, and the results are phenomenal when it comes to just like output um because it's yeah you're just focused on doing it and loving yep. it yep uh, exactly i'm i'm excited uh, to get back in here and uh you know edit somebody's grant or review a policy i know it sounds boring to other people but when you're good at something and you love it it's easy to do yeah that makes a lot of sense so i guess the encouragement might be um yeah, I guess for Princeton Clinic directors uh, who, are, who might be listening to find people who really love, you know, this idea of going full medical or growing the medical and because that might be the right person to have on your team to make this um, to make this journey exactly. to, you know, consider having that more medical services, whole woman health, having someone on your team that loves it to the point where they lose track of their time. <laughs> or they, or they don't. You know, it feels like what they really love to do. I feel like that might be a pre, you know, a really good prerequisite is to have someone that loves this idea, because then all that work will become um, more of a joy than a burden. Well, perhaps. the two key factors are catch the vision, and see how God uniquely um, equipped you to fulfill and meet the vision, make it happen. It's kind of an Esther moment for such a time as this, you were created. And when you catch the vision of where you want to be and realize that you have the skills and attributes to make it happen, then yeah, it all fits together. So which states, um, do you have any guiding star locations in Texas or California, Florida? So we have um, guiding star Wakota in the Twin Cities in Minneapolis in, in Minnesota we have three in Iowa. Okay. We have El Paso, Texas. We have Guiding Star Tampa and Guiding Star Memphis. And our newest one that's opening up is in Las Cruces, New Mexico, right next door to the abortionist who ran Jackson Women's Center the, at the heart of the Dobbs case that overturned Roe v. Wade. Okay. <laughs> Wow, that's that's exciting. Yeah, and and in Arizona, um, we had a, a law from over a hundred years ago get re well instated, and and now the local abortion clinics are sending people to either New Mexico or to California, um, and um, and so yeah, having someone right next to that abortion clinic in New Mexico or all you know next to the abortion clinics in New Mexico is such a an amazing thing because yeah, some Arizonans might be going that direction yep, and it'll um, be guiding star center. So total women's health. Well, thank you, Sean, for being on this podcast. Yeah, and if anyone has questions, I hope you will reach out to her and, and uh, yeah, and just help. Yeah. Just help. Uh, it feels, it feels amazing to be able to take on something really big like this, but to do it as part of a franchise model mm -hmm. or part of a bigger team. Um, model more so than um, solo because right. yeah this it just feels like it's already been trailblazed and people that come alongside to
today are more like trail followers or trail users more so than having the trailblaze and yeah exactly um, create the trail we've been doing the hard work for them they just need to get on board yeah and then letting people take advantage of what's already been done um it's just simply a way of on, you know honoring the work that's already been done and like taking advantage and like letting it um yeah, it's 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 beautiful to see things get used more than once, and and being it's a novel, unique, new idea, it's amazing to see it. Yeah, grow, and I'm and I'm sure it's going to keep growing because it's, it feels like that's the direction that our medical pregnancy clinic world is going is offering more services to our clients and offering it years before they need us, will hopefully make it so they don't need us. Exactly. Shepherd, I shall not be in want. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green. He leads me by quiet blue. Yeah, the walk through darkest valleys, you are me, I be your protection and guidance. I comfort you. Fresh.